you rode a short market. You rode short stocks, short bonds last year to enormous success, 163% easily one of the top hedge funds last year. So what now, Neil? Do you stay short? Yeah, I mean, until the market tells me otherwise, uh, until markets uh, stop stop being on a 45 degree angle to the downside, um, the, the price action is the Bible. I mean, uh, we're in a major bear market. I think um, investors fail to, to really see the forest through the trees in that everything, all asset prices continue to go down. Stocks, bonds, cryptocurrencies, SPACs, whatever you might want to point to. Um, Given the the change of uh, the changing posture by the central banks towards liquidity from a liquidity infusion posture, which they had been in for the past dozen years, initially in response to the global financial crisis, and then more recently in response to the COVID pandemic, mm. um, that has that has changed 180 degrees toward a liquidity uh, extraction posture. And so, so Neil, what was yes? So I mean. To play devil's advocate here, because Guy, Alex, and I speak to people on Bloomberg TV all the time who say, at least this year, the Fed is about to pause, if not pivot. The economy is worsening, which will cause that. Inflation has peaked. So the worst is over, and the market will therefore improve. What are they getting wrong? I don't know if they're getting anything wrong. I'm not in the prediction business. Um, I'm not in the being right business. I'm in the money making business. So um, I try not to think about those sort of things. The market uh, is going down. And, and if things change, uh, I'm going to change. But right now, um, I think the big story is uh, central bank liquidity flows um, becoming a, a headwind against asset prices, whereas they were a tailwind for the past dozen years. So I can't predict where the world is going. I don't know where inflation is going. I don't know. You don't know. Jay Powell doesn't even know. Um, so I think it's a futile exercise to even try to predict that. Um, and I'm just trying to make money. And that's what, I, that's what I'm tasked with on behalf of investors. Yeah, I promise you I would never, ever try to predict that myself, Neil. So when do you know the worst is over then? When do you abandon shorts? Well, you know, again, I think, you know, I have to look at market price action. Um, this is not something that's going to happen an individual day or month. When you see a period of time, when, like I said, when, when markets cease to be on a 45-degree angle to the downside, whether it be stocks, bonds, cryptos, whatever you might want to point to, um, and things start to go into more of a sideways pattern or dare I say even to, towards an upwards pattern over a period of months, not days or weeks necessarily, then, uh, you know, as that changes, my posture will change. But there's the market has done nothing right, so to speak, um, uh, and, and has done nothing to negate that uh, continued, um, you know, downward move. And I think investors have to recognize we're in the midst of a major bear market in all asset classes. And until that changes, I'm going to continue to play it that way. What are your top shorts right now, Neil? Well, I personally uh, don't get involved in shorting individual names. I play more in in the indices. So um, I happen to be short, you know, S and P futures, um, you know, euro stocks, bunds, ten year notes, um, you know, short end of the U.S. yield curve. I uh, recently started putting on shorts uh, in Japan in response to the uh, Bank of Japan blinking um, with their uh, allowing the the ceiling of, of JGBs to to rise, which I think will continue. So I'm short JGBs and. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much expresses what I need to express in the market, and I don't really need to get much more fancy than that. You also run a fund of funds, Neil, and a lot yes. of hedge fund managers um, are, are involved with private capital. They've got private elements in their portfolios. And I'm wondering, you are very much focused on what is happening with the liquidity side. QT is happening. We're seeing with withdrawals of liquidity. Um, I'm wondering where you most think the risk lies surrounding that liquidity withdrawal. Is it in public markets or is it in private markets? Well, the, the, the nice thing about private markets is you really never know how much you're losing because there's no <laughs> there's no mark to market. So although every day it is swinging, you don't see those losses as you do in the public markets, as you're seeing the stock market move up and down daily. So there's no daily price discovery in the private markets. But nonetheless, private equity, by definition, has the word equity in it. So it's 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 the same. So, you know, private equity is just more illiquid. So, you know, uh, but um, I see them, them both suffering similarly uh, as liquidity flows out of the system. Well, to that point, Neil, you said that folks might be too optimistic about where that market, where the stock market goes, that they don't realize and bond market for that for that matter, that we're in the midst of a major bond market. Do you think folks then are, are, are too optimistic about private equity, given the fact it's not marked to market? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, there's nothing magical about private equity. It's just, uh, you know, 
there there is a thought that well there's a there's a liquidity premium for investing in more illiquid assets because not everybody can can do that but you know there's there's trillions of dollars in private equity funds hedge funds venture capital funds that tap that market so the way i see private equity and and uh you know non market not non marketable securities uh non market traded securities is very similar to the way i see public equities it's just not marked every day um i like to say you know i mm. love private equity because you never know how much you're losing <laughs> yeah ignorance <laughs> is bliss perhaps <laughs> Neil, so you mentioned that you've put on new positions around the Bank of Japan, short JGB's long yen. We've been talking about this all, deal, uh, all day, the fact that negative yielding debt nominally it went from 18 trillion to now zero. Now that Japanese debt is no longer giving you a negative yield. Right. Besides just the Japanese market itself, how big of a sea change is this to have the BOJ do something that looks like the beginning stages of tightening? Yeah, I mean the BOJ is just following along with the rest of the world. Um, the 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 reason why it's such a big deal is because the yen carry trade um, is such a huge trade in the market, and its ultimate unwind and it won't happen immediately. It'll be gradual over time. Its ultimate unwind has massive implications for global bond markets and 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 global even you know it's negative for the Japanese stock market, which will be negative to other markets, and it's it's a positive for the yen. So you know the central bank of Bank of Japan will move gradually. They'll probably raise next ceiling to 75 basis points, one percent, so on and so on. But as as uh, Japanese rates start to become more consistent with with other world interest rates um, that carry trade will continue to unwind the carry trade being borrowing in in a, in a lower yielding uh, 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 country and investing in a higher yielding country um, so so that unwind is very significant for markets Neil to conclude and it kind of goes to to the conversation that we've been having 2023 what does it look like for macro managers 2022 We've seen some big names doing really well. Is 2023 going to look the same? I think so. I mean, you know, innocent, you know, guilty until proven innocent, innocent until proven guilty. I mean, you know, there's no reason to expect that that conditions are going to change. Uh, this is, you know, macro tr macro investing and macro trading is very environmentally dependent. You usually get, uh, you know, a few years of time where where markets are really on the move. We're in the midst of that right now. So I see the environment as being very fertile for 2023 and possibly beyond um, until the market suggests otherwise. But there's nothing on the foreseeable horizon that I can see that's going to change uh, you know, the, the fact that it's a very fertile environment for the strategy.